This is not a situation that you want to be in. Losing an engine is a student pilot's worst nightmare. And if you're lucky, you'll have an instructor with you. But if not, you better hope you know what to do because you might have less than 60 seconds to land the plane. Now, sometimes you might be close to the runway, but you could be landing in a field or you might be in the middle of the mountains or you could end up like this guy and doing everything wrong. This guy is flying by himself and he's supposed to be going to spread his friend's ashes. Now very conveniently, he just happens to have two cameras on the outside of the plane, a GoPro inside, and he says he's wearing a parachute because you never know what's gonna happen when you fly an old single engine plane. However, according to statistics from the NTSB, when it comes to general aviation small plane crashes, there's only about one fatal accident per 100,000 flight hours. Now, 72% of small plane crashes were due to pilot error, and engine failure accounts for only about 13% of small aircraft accidents. So it's not very likely that you're gonna die in a small plane crash because of an engine failure, especially if you know what to do. Now, because the stress of the emergency can be overwhelming, sometimes it can cause your brain to shut down or basically freeze up. And that's why student pilots are taught a very simple response they can use to handle pretty much any aircraft emergency. I still remember over 20 years ago going through pilot training for the Air Force where we had to do something called the daily standup. Now, the entire class would be sitting around the flight room with the instructors and they call on one student to stand up and then they would give you a scenario of an aircraft emergency and you'd have to explain how to handle it. Now, the very first thing you were expected to say was, I'm going to maintain aircraft control, analyze the situation and take the proper action, then land as soon as conditions permit. And this is something that a lot of flight schools teach or a more simplified version is just to remember aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now these principles are the same ones I use today flying for the airlines anytime there's an unexpected threat or an emergency. Now in this situation, he's several thousand feet above the ground and you can see when he first starts to have engine trouble, he's already got his door open. So that's not how you would typically be flying around, but watch what he does next. As you can see, he starts pushing and pulling on the yoke, which is typically something that you might do when you're trying to bleed off airspeed and get the plane to slow down. Now, instead, the first thing he should be doing is just maintaining level flight, and the plane is going to naturally slow down until he gets to his best glide speed. Now, that's the maintain aircraft control part of the equation, or the step known as aviate. Next, he should be analyzing the situation and taking the proper action because he has plenty of time due to his altitude to figure out why the engine quit and he can try to restart it if appropriate or at least review the full checklist procedures. Now, if you're in a situation like this, you might think you're hosed because of all the mountains around you, but remember that your airplane can still glide a good distance. It's not just gonna fall out of the sky. Now, in his situation, there's at least a few little valleys or dry riverbeds, basically places where he's probably going to live if he just sets himself up for a normal pattern. And that's part of the navigate step of handling the emergency. Then the next step is to communicate or land as soon as conditions permit. Now I'm assuming he has a working radio because he's wearing a headset, but he never makes any radio calls in the video. He doesn't make a mayday call or try to get anyone on the radio to let them know about his situation or anything. He just decides that the best solution is to just jump out of the plane. Now I'm gonna explain what happened to him later, but first, just keep in mind that you won't always lose your engine at a high altitude. This student pilot is doing some pattern work with her instructor and you're gonna see how fast things can go wrong and how little time you might have to land the plane. Now the student has just done a go around and is climbing away from the runway when the engine starts to sputter. Climb right now to traffic, that's not 8828 What is going on What's here? happening? I don't know, on you? Your controls. Climb right now to traffic, 121 units from Charlie, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. We're gonna be landing on runway four, we're losing engine power. Remember the three steps of aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now within seven seconds of the engine starting to sputter, the instructor takes over and has done all three of those steps. He's maintained aircraft control and he's aviating. He analyzed the situation and took the appropriate action. Traffic 121 uniform Charlie is gonna be landing on runway four. We're turning final runway four, come on. Clear on traffic 176 Mike Echo, breaking off the pattern. Runway's clear. Realizing he doesn't have the altitude to have sufficient time to troubleshoot or restart the engine, he begins a turn to land opposite direction on the runway they just flew over. Now that's all part of navigating. Then he communicates, making that mayday call and letting other aircraft know what they're doing so anyone else trying to land will get out of their way. And he's landing as soon as conditions permit, which in this case is less than 60 seconds from the time the engine sputtered. Nice. Okay, we're on the ground. Nice. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Wow. 
And if you think that's a short amount of time, just wait till you see how long these pilots have from the time they lose an engine until they land. However, just remember, you might not always have an instructor flying with you that can take over the controls. Now, this student pilot was completing a solo cross-country flight when he started having engine problems, and you're going to see why in just a second. But first, it's the most awful feeling in the world to be flying around like this, and then you feel a loss of power, and you look down and you see the RPM rolling back. Now, panic starts to set in for a few brief seconds because you're probably thinking, I can't believe this is happening to me. Now, in this situation, he said it took about 10 seconds for him to get over that startle effect. Now, he does a really good job of maintaining aircraft control and keeping the plane flying as he analyzes the situation, but he can't figure out why the engine is malfunctioning, and so he makes a radio call to tower to let them know what's going on with this emergency. Unfortunately, he's too far away from the runway to make it back, so the next best thing that he can do is find an open field to try and land it. And if you're wondering why he doesn't try to land on a highway or on a road somewhere, as you can see in this video, the problem is that can be extremely dangerous. First of all, depending on the traffic, there could be a lot of cars in the way, but the bigger risk of landing on the road is the things that you can't see. It's very hard to see power lines and other cables and wires that might be strung across the road, and those are gonna absolutely ruin your day if you hit them when you try to land. They're definitely a threat to consider if you're landing in a field, but typically it's a much lower risk of hitting them. Now this guy's altitude is about two to 3,000 feet when he loses engine power, and it takes about two minutes from that loss of power until he lands. So that guy earlier that was flying above the mountains probably had at least five more minutes to find a solution before he jumped out of the plane. But check out the reason why this guy loses his engine. The situation was entirely preventable, and I just want to say he did a great job of handling the emergency and sharing this lesson with everyone because a lot of people might not be comfortable doing that. Now, if we zoom in, you can see that the plane is out of fuel. <laughs> so please make sure to plan your flight accordingly and monitor your fuel so you don't get into this situation. Obviously, if you lose an engine, the ideal situation is when you're close to the runway and you have enough time to try and troubleshoot the problem and fly a normal pattern to land. The important thing to remember is to keep flying the aircraft. Maintain aircraft control. Don't let the nature of the emergency overwhelm you. Even if you're in the middle of the mountains, if you have a runway in sight that you can make it to, just fly your normal approach. Unfortunately, the situation isn't always ideal. This is an experimental aircraft, and the guy on the right is the student pilot. Now, they aren't very high up when the engine quits, and you can see the instructor on the left troubleshooting while maintaining aircraft control and trying to find a suitable place to land. Now, it turns out they only had about 40 seconds from the time the engine quits until they touch down in this field, so overall, they did a pretty amazing job. And if you're wondering what happened to this guy, well, apparently it was all intentional just to get views for his YouTube channel, and he's now facing up to 20 years in prison. And if you want to see a full breakdown of a student pilot that lost his engine and had to crash in the river, be sure to check out this video on the channel here, and I'll see you next time.